Hi, this is Tanya Gibbs from Psycho Mom Scrapbooks and More, and I wanted to share with you today a book that I made using a tutorial that I found on following the paper trail. This is a paper bag book. The cover is bound together with canvas that I painted to match the papers that I used inside, and all of the die cuts that were used throughout this book were cut from the Cricut from my kitchen cartridge. Also, these charms that are hanging here on the side of the book are also cut from that cartridge. This is a colander. It was cut three times. It was cut once out of silver cardstock and twice out of transparencies, then fused together with the Xyron to make it a little more sturdier for the cover so it doesn't become damaged. I also made this picture that I wanted to keep clear, so I cut it twice out of transparencies and then stained it with some blue stays on ink so that you could actually see it. And then there's a little metal charm here that says love, and there's a couple of little cookie cutters tied in like beads. Um, that, those were actually in the button section of the, of the craft store. The rose is made from a substance I'm calling Plaper. I will post a tutorial on how to make that at a later date but it's using the Tim Holtz grunge paper rose technique and the paper is actually a piece of freezer paper with uh, grocery bags fused inside of it to make it a little more like a plastic so if you can hear these little leaves and all have become very pliable so that they hold their shape a little better now this book has been toted around in the car and all kinds of things so it just the rose needs to be fluffed up but then by using the freezer paper I was able to uh, color the outside of the rose with ink you know standard ink and then I ran it through my cuddle bug and gave it some texture and then the the leaves were actually I took a, a copy of a recipe that my grandmother had handwritten and I used it as the paper for the leaves so that you can see some of the things that she's written on here and then I just stained it with ink as well and then of course all these ribbons they come from various companies there are things I've had in my stash or I found them at a local scrapbook store the paper uh, selection that I used for this book was taken from the Prima Nursery Tales slab and I used all the pinks and blues and greens that were in that slab to make this. I also stained all of the edges with the distressing ink from Tim Holtz and the colors burlap. And then a lot of the stickers that you see like the rolling pin and this sticker, they were from Heartwarming Vintage and this is their homemade collection. So uh, this, this medallion down here is it says mom's diner open 24 hours where food is finer and then I wrote a message to my kids to explain why I decided to make this book and you know how just a little journal to add a little bit of interest to the book and give it some of the heritage kind of feel to it and then over here I have breakfast and I don't know if you can see it in the photograph or not but there's a knife, fork, and spoon that I cut out of the silver paper and then tied them together with ribbon. And all of these cuts were taken from the Cricut cartridge. Inside here, this is the opening of the bag. The recipe cards are housed here. This is a copy of one of the recipe cards. And once I'm, I've completed all of the recipe cards, I'm going to laminate them so that they're a little sturdier. And then on the back of each recipe card, I'm going to add a photograph of the person who asked me to include this recipe in the book and then maybe a little blurb about why that's their favorite recipe or a favorite memory about that recipe so once all of that work is done then I'll go back and laminate all these cards and two the nice thing about this is that there's plenty of room for expansion so as our family grows and and our tastes change we can add recipes to this book throughout time then on this page it's a little more obvious that this is a paper bag this is the bottom of the bag and again, you can find the tutorial on how to put this together off of following the paper trail. She has a YouTube video that's very well explained on how to put this together. This is a uh, blender that I have from the Cricut Cut file. And I wanted it to be transparent, so I cut it twice, once out of transparency and once out of black paper, and then fused it together. And then it's on a pop dot to kind of raise it up. These images that are here on this page 
um, and throughout the book, the kind of older images, they either came from heartwarming vintage or I downloaded them off the internet. This was an ad off the internet and it says husband tested recipes. So inside of here, I decided to make this a pocket and inside of here, I put all of the recipes that are in this book that are my husband's favorites. And then this is one of the journal, um, mason jar journal, uh, selections that came from the heartwarming vintage collection and I just again photograph photocopied them and then printed them out again to use them throughout the book and then this is a Campbell soup ad that I just cut out printed off the internet cut it out put it on a pop dot to raise it up and then over here this ad cracks me up I don't know if you can see it really well in the book in the image or not but it says for men only and it's a Campbell soup beef ad beef soup ad so I went ahead and added my recipe for beef stew in here and went back with all of my scraps and cut out things like these mittens to include on throughout the book as well. And then this is my vegetable page. Again, these images here, I when I looked up the recipes on the internet, instead of retyping all of them, I found some pictures that are associated with it and that's a great way to put a recipe book together very quickly. Just download the images along with the recipes. This is another uh, little pocket thing that I made from the, it's coming off because I've been tugging at it, but it's another one of the, um, the little things I made out of scrap. And then these are little scrap stickers that were left over that hinge it together. And I just need to put some more glue on here. Also, this twill that you see across the top here has little recipe um, things on it as well, like uh, salt and pepper shakers and things. And I found this at the local scrapbook store, and it's twill. And I, I just stained it with the, with the um, distressing ink to give it the same color as the rest of the book. And then these are simple recipes that I included. They're all on a, they're laminated, and I just put them inside of here to kind of give this pocket a little bit more depth and interest. Same thing on this side. And then here's the casseroles and the stickers on here. I found these two sets of stickers in the Michaels dollar bin uh, that said, uh, this one says, here's what's cooking. And this one says queen of the kitchen. So I added a little heart of a button at the top. This is full of buttons. All kinds of scraps were used in this book. This is a great way to get rid of a lot of old product. Again, there's the breads. The stickers came from Heartwarming Vintage. This ad came from the internet and it says, be fit, not fat. And I thought that was cute. And then over here, this was actually taken from the Heartwarming Vintage journal, journal notes. And I copied her and printed her out twice and then I put some images towards the back like the flower sack and then placed her on a pop dot to give her a little more dimension and then inside of here are some tips for you know little things like it, uh, bacon is bacon not turkey so anyway I just thought that was funny there's another mason jar and then here's another ad that is a butcher with a with a mom selecting meat and then down here it says seasoned with love and then of course the most favorite dessert section and the little chiquita banana recipe book and i left this pocket open so i could add recipes in here too and then this actually was the ad that was the inspiration for the color palette in the book this is a jello ad and i just love the pinks the greens the blues that all kind of, kind of came together and then over here again I used some of my scraps to make a little book and this is what my husband calls the best yellow cake with chocolate frosting ever you could make it homemade he still wouldn't like it this is his favorite thing ever and the secret is Betty Crocker you got it so I hid that one since that's kind of a secret but um, it has also got the little journal that explains why he thinks that's the best cake ever and then the final page of the book is this is a, um, again, from the Heartwarming Vintage, and it says, In the childhood memories of every good cook, there's a large kitchen, a warm stove, and a simmering pot of love. And so in here, I wanted to add the names of all of the people who participated in putting this book together and gave me their contributions for recipes. And there's a cute little ad here that was also from the Heartwarming 
vintage. Then over here, this is uh, actually the image of the girl was taken from a piece of scrapbook paper that I had from Webster's Papers, and it's the cherry blossom or cherry pie collection. It's cherry something collection, but um, I used my Dymo tape um, press thing. I don't know what those things are called, but anyway, it says the secret ingredient in life is family, and then I cut the word family from the cricket, and then it says eat, drink, and be merry. 